And then the next book that I read is The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley. This was my other mystery for the month, and this is the first in the Flavia Deleuze series. Flavia Deleuze is a young preteen girl who ends up solving murder mysteries, and she is a chemistry and science whiz kid. And she took a little bit of time for me to get used to, but by the end I really loved her as a character and just really enjoyed her. So. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars and you can look at the review if you are interested in hearing more about this and I will most definitely be looking more at this series and I only gave it 3 out of 5 stars simply because I think the next ones in the series will be even better and so I can very freely give them a 4 or even 5 out of 5 stars. So I really enjoyed this and want to continue with that series. And then the next book that I completed was How Green Was My Valley. And this was a buddy read with Kristen over at Vienna Waits Books. And we both enjoyed reading this, but kind of burned out towards the end. So How Green Was My Valley is the story of Hugh, a boy, a small boy in the beginning, who's living in a small mining town in Wales. And at the time that this happens, there are the minor strikes that are happening and his brothers, he has lots of older brothers, are growing more and more unhappy with the conditions that the miners are having to work under and the wages that they think are unfair. But also, of course, you know that an issue of economics like that is going to be really, really complicated and coal was just selling more cheaply. so they're kind of having to pay the workers more cheaply, but then obviously people are living on very meager sums. And so there's just a very vivid portrayal of life in this small Welsh town. And Hugh has a mother who he is just very, very taken with, and she's just a wonderful woman and is very in love with his father. And I really enjoyed those passages when it was talking about his parents flirting. It was really fun and I thought very sweet and just really neat for him to see kind of the love between his parents. and. Uh, it was, though, really emotionally draining. In addition to that, like I said, it was emotionally draining. I felt kind of at arm's length from the characters, and I think the simple reason for that was that this is written in dialect, and so it felt kind of like I couldn't really understand what they were saying part of the time, and obviously I, I could get the gist of what they were saying, but I don't know, I just didn't feel quite connected to this, so I gave this a three stars. I really enjoyed talking about it with Kristen, but I think part of the problem also was it was competing with another book that I will talk about right after this, and that was a book, another book about uh, boyhood and growing up and dealing with big issues in life. And I will say though, the passages that were the more prosy passages, kind of talking about things, describing things vividly, were amazingly beautiful. I did a lot of underlining in this, and so I really did enjoy that passage, but there was something just about getting to know the people that I felt like I wasn't ever fully there. So I think also I just had maybe too high of expectations for this. Like I said, definitely good. I think every classic lover should read this, but it wasn't quite what I was hoping for. But what I was hoping for and definitely fulfilled and exceeded those expectations was My Father's Glory and My Mother's Castle by Marcel Pagnol. I gave this a huge, huge five out of five stars. This I think will be one of my favorite books of the year. I have such a book hangover from it. It was a breathtaking tale and it's just about a boy's time at a summer home in Provence and or a vacation home in Provence and talking about his family and nature and his adventures there. I will be doing a full review on this book if you would like to hear more because I would definitely love to talk about it more. And like I said, How Green Was My Valley was good but it was just a bummer because I read it the same time that I read this and it just couldn't stand up to this. The next book that I read was Miss Bunkle's book by D.E. Stevenson. So I got three modern classics in this month and it was a lot of fun. Miss Bunkle's book, in case you do not know what it is about, is about Barbara Bunkle. Miss Bunkle's book is about Barbara Bunkle who is a wallflower type character and no one really notices her that much. She doesn't stand out and she is struggling to make enough income to survive. So she decides she will write a book and she ends up writing a book simply about the people 
people in her town and the very insightful things she has discovered about their characters and the flaws she can see in them and the strengths that she can see in them and even predicting certain marriages and it was such a fun book so i put this book into the category of what i talked about in a couple, uh, couple of videos ago when i did a vintage chiclet book review this is definitely what i would call vintage chiclet it is over 50 years old and it is just a light fun book that's really about relationships and the people in the story. So I would say if you enjoyed I Capture the Castle, I think you would definitely enjoy D.E. Stevenson and I'm looking forward to reading more by her. And the next book that I read and I finally, finally finished was The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. And I'll be doing a full review video about this and actually I have for years been slowly going through all of Charles Dickens and calling it Project Dickens and so I'll just be telling you about that because I haven't actually talked about that on this channel yet because this is the first Dickens that I finished while I've had this channel. So looking forward to talking more with you guys about that. And then a historical fiction that I read was The Stargazer Sister by Carrie Brown. And I did another buddy read with Kate over at the Novel Nomad. And I just have such a great time buddy reading with her. And she has so many insights about books that I otherwise wouldn't have thought of or wouldn't have known. And she's just such a lovely person and so sweet. And so I'm really happy with the buddy reads that we've done. And we're definitely planning already on doing a couple more this month. So looking forward to that but I will be doing a full review of this I gave this a four stars really enjoyed it and I look forward to talking to you guys about that and then the next two books the last two books are both YA and I have had sort of complex complicated uh, feelings about the genre of YA but these next two totally knocked it out of the park for me and totally exceeded my expectations and I was not seeing that at all. So I think that YA romance is not for me, but YA fantasy is where it's at because I just love a like quick fantasy book that I can just, just really race through in a couple of days and get totally immersed in the world and really enjoy that. So the first that I read was The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. And this is a retelling of the classic fairy tale, which I had not read yet. I have a sort of low-key book club I do with my friend Joanna from college, and this was her pick. And I am so glad she picked it. I really highly enjoyed this. I gave it a four stars. It is about Ani, who is a princess, and she has, it becomes clear, some sort of magical powers. They're not quite sure what, but uh, some of it involves talking to animals, some of it involves uh, understanding the wind but anyhow her mother is kind of frightened by that and so separates her from her siblings and doesn't want her influencing them and then when she is older her mother reveals the fact to her that when Ani turns 16 in a matter of days she is uh, going to be shipped away to another country and marry a prince who she has been betrothed to since she was a little girl and she didn't even know about it so this was a totally original fairy tale I had never read it and so I just loved not having any idea what was going to happen towards the ending I kind of predicted what I thought would happen but for much of the story I was really riveted and I had no idea what was going to happen so I really enjoyed this and uh, what I loved about it was it felt very very medieval that's what I love about Ella Enchanted so much so if you want a good solid medieval fairy tale I'd say this is a wonderful retelling and then the last book I'll talk to you about which so surprised me with how much I loved it it's the most fun I've had reading a book all year and that is Cinder by Marissa Meyer this is the first in the Lunar Chronicles series and I know it is so hyped up on booktube I basically only read it because I was looking for an audiobook to read and I feel like it's less of a gamble to spend time on an audiobook if that makes sense because it's you know I have more audiobook time than I do physical reading time and so I was willing to spend some time on it and I was so riveted right from the beginning and was not expecting that at all I had no idea I was going to love it so much and Cinder in case you don't know is a sci-fi retelling of Cinderella and the whole series is sci-fi retellings and so Cinder is about Cinderella who is a cyborg Cinder is the main character and she is a cyborg mechanic living in New Beijing and 
this is still on planet Earth, but then in this world, uh, there is the moon and it is the planet lunar and people live, there's a whole other race of people that live there and the evil queen Levana rules over the planet lunar. And it was such a unique and original world. I thought the writing was great and it didn't have insta love, which is my gripe with the, you know, rare YA that I have read and it had a strong female character who spoke her mind and I really fell in love with the character of Cinder and so totally totally uh, just overwhelmed by this series in a good way and I'm definitely definitely going to be reading uh, Scarlet and hopefully continuing with the rest of the series if I love Scarlet as much as I did Cinder and looking forward to that so I will be looking forward to telling you guys what I think about the rest of the series, but um, I'm not going to do a review on Cinder just because there are so many out there. So if you, you know, you could just search for reviews of that if you'd like to see some good ones. So I hope you guys enjoyed this wrap up. It was a great month. It was a big reading month and uh, March is turning into a big reading month as you'll see in the, the next video from me on my TBR for March. So I hope you enjoyed this and enjoyed hearing about the different books and like I said I'll be putting out some book reviews very shortly of the ones that I didn't talk about as much. So I hope that you have a great day and I will see you for my TBR tomorrow.